All right, it is our last day here at ASIN. Um, kind of sad, though, because it's been a good weekend. Right now, I have Mark Hildreth with me from Gundam Wing. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Tired? Tired. tired. Yeah, tired. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing a lot of sleeping. It's just well, staying up really late at night, you know. It's long hours. Running around like a chicken with my It head takes a lot out of you, the convention it does. experience. It does. It's, but it's fun. Yeah. I wouldn't trade it yeah. for anything. No, it's been great. Good. Anime Central has been has been wonderful. They've they've treated me so well. Uh, Chicago is As beautiful. Say, what do you think about Chicago? I've had a great time. It's my first time, really, um, actually really? getting to, yeah, actually be in Chicago. I've come through the airport, you know, many times, but... Um, it doesn't count. Sorry. No, it doesn't really, you know. But it's been great. It's been beautiful. I got to uh, I got to go see my Vancouver Canucks uh, lose horribly to the yeah, Chicago Blackhawks in the watched, NHL playoffs. I watched one one goal. That was my welcome to Chicago. So I was like, was oh, terrible. this is gonna yeah. suck. No, Sorry. but it's it's been it's been great. Everybody here has been uh, amazing, and uh, I've played a couple concerts here. I've been playing some songs from uh, my record uh, oh, cool. Complex State of Attachment, which has been great. And the fans have been amazing, and uh, the setup has been great, and the people here at the convention have been awesome. So it's been a, it's been a really good time so far. Good, good. Now, how did you first get into the world of voice acting? I first, when I was, I've been I've been acting since I was very young, since I was about five. Okay. <clears throat> and um, uh, a, a very old friend of mine named Marsha Goodman, who is a, a voiceover director in Los Angeles. Uh, she cast me in my very first cartoon when I was about maybe 11 years old. Uh, she cast me as the, the, they did a remake of the old uh, Bob Clampett cartoon, Beanie and Cecil. Okay. You know, the one with the, with the, 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 uh, the big lizard, yes. you know, yes. and then the kid with the beanie. So she cast me as the voice of, of Beanie, and oh, uh, she was so wonderful. She uh, she flew me and, and my dad and my brother down to Los Angeles and put it up at, put us up at the uh, at the Universal Sheraton and sent us to Disneyland and did all this all this cool stuff. And she's one of my oldest friends. She's just a wonderful woman. Um, but that was my very first role, and then I, I did a number of other things, and then um, you know I did a couple of anime. I, I feel uh, I feel like a um, I feel a little bit green compared to some of the people you know who appear here because I've done relatively few uh, anime yeah, shows, well. but the ones that I've done are very, very popular and um, have done very well. Speaking of which, Gundam Wing, right? Your hero. Um, how did you enjoy the role of hero? It was an interesting role to play, you know, because a lot of the time uh, with. Uh, with voiceover work, um, you know, it's very sort of wacky Looney Tune kind of stuff. Right. But um, this was one of the first scripts that I that I read that was um, it had sort of some it's dramatic meat to it. Yeah, and and there's yeah there's there's some uh, there's some real storyline. And <clears throat> a friend of mine described it actually really well. He's like, it's kind of like the it's like the Japanese Star Wars. Yeah, it it's is. like You're got right. a whole mythology right. about it. It's got a whole sort of history, and the and the brand is like really very popular very famous I was actually in Japan recently and I didn't realize how popular it was until I got there uh -huh. and Gundam yeah Gundam wing Gundam is wing like is everywhere. everywhere it's insane nice. yeah, yeah kind, of a, cool. kind of a cool feeling inside huh yeah it's, like, it's, it's, it's fun to be part of something that people really appreciate you know and, and it's and it's a privilege to get to come here and and play concerts and 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 connect with with fans who who really uh, are genuinely moved by your work as an actor um, that is uh, um, you know, I've, I, I, I consider that a great privilege to, to be able to be a part of people's lives in that way. Now, um, why do you think Gundam Wing has been one of the most popular Gundam series? Uh, probably me. Okay. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm willing to go for it. Why not? <laughs> She's like, on. yeah, sure, sure, of course it was. I don't, you know, I think, um, I think in all honesty, I think we were sort of standing on the shoulders of like a brand name that has been built up mm -hmm. over many, many years. Um, I'm always surprised be, in the sense that, uh, you know, we recorded Gundam Wing quite a while ago, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, yeah. um, and it's still very popular. And, you know, a lot of stuff that's popular today, I noticed like spikes and then Drops. crashes. But but this particular franchise uh, has a kind of staying power that it's is... been able to hold on to its... Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a real chutzpah exactly. or something. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. I speak your language. <laughs> cool. Now, um... What are some of your most favorite voiceover roles that you've done? Um, well, I'd say Hero in Gundam Wing uh, is sort of unique and kind of stands out a bit for me because of the dramatic quality. Because it was something that I that I I remember going in to record it and thinking like this is this is the script implies that there's a sort of uh, humanness about this guy and and that was really that was really fun to do that and and also very uh, exhausting because he's uh, he's a character who. Um, 
kind of has a lot going on under the surface, you know, kind of bubbling underneath the surface emotionally. And that's not something that comes along in, in voiceover very much. You know, there's, you're, not, you're not usually talking about subtext no. when you're talking about voiceover cartoons. But uh, so that was sort of a unique opportunity in that sense. Um, I'm doing a cartoon right now um, called Hot Wheels Battle Force 5, okay. which is like a big new release of the Hot Wheels brand. And I play the lead character, Vert Wheeler. And that's been really fun because we have a great cast. We have some of the best voiceover performers in Vancouver uh, working on that show. Uh, Vancouver, Canada is where yeah. I'm from. And, uh, and it's, it's a really well-written script. And also we, like, we kind of get to improvise. Like they're not uh, they're not totally totally like rock solid written in stone about like the script so we can we can mix some stuff up and play with it yeah we can play around and we can and you know all the actors are there in the booth we're all in the room together so nice. they're all very professional and they're very experienced actors on this show so it's it's fun because we'll like we'll throw stuff in and we'll be like yeah, that's great that's great keep that <laughs> keep that's it. better that's better that way yeah. and we just go with it and it's 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 been really fun to work on that show now um you mentioned your singing and your songwriting. How did you start with that career? I've been playing music since I was about 10 years old. Okay. Um, I taught myself to play the piano uh, uh, when I was very young. And um, I, like when I was really, I was a little kid. And I'm the oldest of four boys. So I have, wow. I have three, three younger brothers. And, you know, we're all three years apart. And we have this hilarious picture uh, at my house where, like, you know, we're kids, right? So we always run around naked. Yeah. And we have this hilarious picture of like me and two of my brothers, and at least two of us are naked, all standing at the piano, and like I'm playing, and they're just trying to play along with me, and it's really, really funny because it's just from behind, you know what I mean? The three of us trying to like play the piano. Three little boys and bare butts. Yeah, exactly. Nice. And it's it's nice. great. But that's when that's when I started playing was I was very young, and I just I just liked something about it. Um, you know, I, I I'm not sure what it is. I, I was I was born with a with a natural ear. Um, yes. I have two uh, grandparents who were born deaf. Wow! And 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 for some reason, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like whatever they didn't have in terms of an ear. Maybe I got it because your genes can go back seven generations. Uh, maybe that's what it was. You know, I wonder you just because pick it's up stuff. yeah. yeah really it's a weird coincidence that it would be that way. You know, but I taught myself to play, and I've played my entire life. Uh, that's awesome. Complex State of Attachment is my very first record. Okay. Um, I recorded it with uh, an amazing uh, producer named Warren Livesey, who's a, a British producer who's sold about 15 million records in wow. his lifetime. And uh, we recorded it in Vancouver over, over the course of about a year. Um, I worked with some amazing musicians, uh, uh, Ian Brown, Doug Elliott. Uh, I, I had just really great singers. I had a guy named Jim Burns who played, uh, who sung on my record. and, and um, just got to, was very fortunate to work with some great people. I'm very proud of the record, and, and as I said, you know, it's a, it's really a privilege to get to come to someone to somewhere uh, um, like Chicago and and get to play for for so many fans. We had a great concert here. We had a you know we had a huge turnout, and um, um, it's been going very well. And I, I love to play, so it's like I, I feel lucky that I get to play for people. It's it's kind of nice that you get to just do something that you enjoy and that people just love it. Right. Now, um, you kind of already. Pass it. We don't even need to talk about your. Well, no, we could talk more I'm about your. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. It's like you, you already knew. Yeah, it's like I read them before. Uh, now, what feeling would you like to pass along to any of your fans here at Anime Central um, when they hear you perform? You know, I've been thinking a lot in the last few years about what I want, what it is I want to do with music, and I think there's a lot of music out there that is. Um, you know, it it sounds great, and it's got a good feel, and it's got a great groove, and it's got a lot of melody, and it's and it's a beautiful thing to listen to, but mm -hmm. kind of lacks substance. I completely know. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you turn on the radio, and on the whole, it's but it doesn't really don't mean, mean much, anything. right? And it's right. Like, there's nothing there. There's no story behind it. There's right, exactly. And I don't know that. Um, I mean, I think there's a place for for all music, um, mm -hmm. but w you know, I I listen to what's out there, and I think there's a there is a there's something missing. There's something missing, and th and that's what people keep telling me. They're like, you know, what I love about your music is like not only is it do you write like really great tunes that I love to sing along to that are really hummable that I can't get out of my head, but also like your your songs have a story and they have something to say. And I feel like that's so important. You know, I feel like music or art that doesn't really say anything mm -hmm. is just it's nice to listen to, but it, it doesn't really move the world anywhere. So if, if, 
if people would take anything from my music, what I'd like to um, what I'd like to share or what I'd like to suggest is that each of us has a a profound opportunity in our lifetime to um, experience something uh, amazing and experience something that no other person can experience, which is our own experience of ourselves. And if I can inspire in somebody through my music or through my performing, if I can inspire them to see themselves a little bit differently or to see the world a little bit differently or to just feel what it feels like to be them projectively mm -hmm. through my songs in a different way, I feel like that's about the best that I could ask for. And the feedback that I've been getting has been great because people are saying, um, you know, I, I, I had never thought about this until I heard you play that song. And I'm like, great, what were you thinking about? And they're like, well, it's like this and this and this. And I'm going, well, that's not what I was writing about at all. But that's great. That's great, because <laughs> it brought something else that you maybe never thought about. Right, and, that's, and I think that's what's beautiful about music, is it's like there's this language mm -hmm. that translates to all people in all cultures, in all walks of life. Exactly, exactly. It's the universal language. Right. And so like, when people get something and they see something differently than they saw before, to me, that's a very profound thing because mm -hmm. that means that that person chose to like see themselves a little bit differently, and I think that's kind of what moves the world forward is when people do that. Yeah. Now, do you have any other plans for here in Chicago before you go home? Probably not. I've got a few more things to do here at the convention. I've got some autograph signings, and uh, and then we're going to do a big closing ceremony, which should be fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that I'm going to head. I warn you now. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know what I'm in for. Screwballs in there. So. <laughs> yeah. I've noticed a few screwballs here and there, myself included. Yeah. But uh, it's okay. yeah, it's I'm, I, I feel like I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm amongst family here. <laughs> it is a family. Yeah. It really and truly is. Yeah. 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 It's been great. Um, well, are there any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that you can tell us about? Yeah, I uh, I I was uh, I was in Ireland in the summer. I worked oh. on the the uh, which is I know is beautiful and I love it. I love it there. Uh, I. Uh, I spent the summer uh, working on the third season of the Showtime series uh, called The Tudors okay. with Jonathan Rhys Meyers. And uh, so that's just started to premiere in, in, uh, in the States. Yes. Um, and so uh, over the course of that season, um, I'll, be, I'll be probably spending more time in the States and, and, uh, and working on some, some different projects with acting. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, in, with music, I, uh, I'm working on a new single. It's called Change of Mind. Okay. It's uh, like a pop R&B kind of sound. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, my 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 musical my my biggest musical influences and and the the best way I've been able to sort of categorize my music is it's like it's somewhere between like Elton John mm -hmm. and Stevie Wonder. Oh. So okay. I'm working on this song that's like a pop R&B kind of song. Right. Uh, it has a, a a big acapella element. Ooh. So there's a lot of vocals and. Uh, I'm looking at uh, enrolling a, a number of different people to, to work on the song with me. There's one group uh, in America, this a cappella group called Naturally Seven, okay. who are amazing. And uh, they would be, they're my dream group to get to, to come and sing on this song with me. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if, I'm, if I'm able to get them. But uh, it's got kind of a boys to men kind of a sound okay. to it. And, uh, and that's something that I'm, that I'm doing a lot of work on. And then just promoting the record and touring. I'll be playing some more shows and... Uh, Florida, Toronto, Vancouver, uh, California, a couple other places. Um, and uh, yeah, just moving ahead with those projects and a few other things that I kind of got on the back burner. All right. Well, uh, best of luck with everything. Thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. You too. And hope to see you again sometime soon. Absolutely. Awesome.